It's the end of the regular season. The playoffs are here, and today we're doing a end of regular season update to keep you in line and in check with where we're at here in the current state of the NASCAR Heat 5 career mode. I've been asked to do kind of update videos before because I know some of you get a little bit lost uh, in the sauce on driver changes that are confirmed, team changes and whatnot, and we have had our fair share of silly season activity take place this season. So so that's what we're going to go over today before we kick off the playoffs here in season number three. Format changes being speculated as well. We'll talk a little bit later about that. But of course, the season started in the Daytona 500 where Todd Gilliland picked up the victory and still missed out on the playoffs due to, well, 17 different winners and Chase Briscoe having more points than him inside the top 30. And that put Briscoe in over the 34 instead. Tongula Land, our first subject of silly season news. He will not be at Front Row Motorsports next season. He is headed to Penske Racing, replacing the number two driver of Austin Cindric. So Gilliland will be behind the wheel. That was confirmed uh, a few episodes ago. Early on in the season, we saw Stuart Haas racing in just the third round of the season. It was call out Ford and the lack of support that they were getting. And it didn't take long for that story to develop. It was relatively short after Stuart Stuart Haas Racing confirmed they were going to leave Ford and we waited a little bit more and they confirmed they were headed to Chevrolet and we are, were expecting them to be a two car operation going into next season, season four of the career mode. However, just recently in the last episode, it was confirmed Stuart Haas Racing actually instead of going to Chevrolet, well, they've been completely bought out by Dale Earnhardt Jr. who's coming in to bring in Junior Motorsports into the Cup Series next season and basically just take over the Stuart Haas Racing team and rebrand it to JRM so it will remain Chevrolet and it will be still a two car operation just no longer Stuart Haas Racing and now Dale Jr. Jr. Motorsports. It's going to be exciting to see what Junior's team can do next season with the driver lineup that they have of course with Carson Hosevar behind the wheel of the number 8 uh, but then as well Noah Gregson in the 88 car so of course the team of 8s. One thing that may have went maybe missed or overlooked early in the season, if you guys remember back to the Richmond episode, uh, we had a lot of controversy from NASCAR uh, after the failure to throw some cautions for some obvious incidents on the racetrack that led to the firing of the race director. Uh, but ever since then, it has been uh, quite calm as Joe Gibbs Racing as well had a very slow start to the season when it came to the mile and a half program. Uh, but we have since been able to get a lot better. Of course, I've won three races now. Ty Gibbs has four. Christopher for Bell won the last episode there with two uh, wins. Denny Hamlin, who announced his final season in NASCAR Cup Series competition full time this season, uh, well, he unfortunately missed the playoffs. He had enough points to be in the top 16, but obviously we've had so many winners this season. You've had to had a win to advance into this playoff. Hamlin was so close in Daytona, but Christopher Bell won, even though Operation DH11 was in effect. There'll be more on that story in the actual next career mode episode. As well, early on in the season, driver injuries were a thing that we saw. Bubba Wallace uh, actually got injured early on in the season, missed a few races after a hard hit in Las Vegas. Christopher Bell missed a few races uh, with concussion-like symptoms after a crash in Texas. Joey Logano uh, got hurt uh, in that same race, uh, hurt his leg, but did not miss any races and actually came back and won the following week after a leg injury in Auto Club uh, as, as well. Not long after that, we got our official announcement that a new manufacturer was joining the sport. Honda. Honda is coming in next season, season four, to the NASCAR Cup Series. This is a move that's been speculated to be happening in real life at some point, uh, and it's now happening here in our career mode, and we knew early on in the season that it sounded like they were going after two teams to bring on board to kind of focus on, uh, which I feel like is a good size to go for, uh, for a new manufacturer to really put your resources into and first the news came out that Andretti Global of course the new team that came in last season to the sport uh, in this uh, career mode well they would be going to Honda not a surprise to anyone due to the IndyCar connection uh, but then just recently Trackhouse Racing a team known for making bold decisions bold moves well they've done it again and they have now decided to leave Chevrolet and Trackhouse will be with Honda next season as well which is going to be in my opinion very exciting I think Trackhouse has the opportunity to kind of uh, 
really stand out and take over next season. I think Andretti Global, is, they're not going to change a whole lot with the Honda partnership, although they have the partnership in IndyCar. I think Honda is really going to be focused on focusing in on propelling Trackhouse Racing into a team that's going to be really a power horse and compete with the Hendrick Motorsports and the Joe Gibbs teams as they still are a great team now, but they just, they're just missing a little bit. On other topics of team situations, charters have been, of course, uh, kind of going around all over the place. Colleague Racing had the big drama at the end of last season and I kind of blew the uh, gasket that kind of kicked all that off of course when we were getting dropped from Colleg or leaving Colleg I should say uh, but it was a really interesting scenario now where Colleg Racing has officially lost all of their full-time drivers they are officially all going uh, elsewhere and we don't know what the situation is with Colleg going into next season but when we talk about charters the big team that we know is uh, that is buying some is Richard Childress Racing they are planning to expand to a three-car operation next season and that led with the news of Kevin Harvick and Austin Dillon as well. Harvick is going to be stepping out of the booth from Fox Sports. He's going to be going into the ownership role uh, alongside Austin Dillon at Richard Childress Racing as Richard Childress himself steps down and just lets those two uh, take over which also means Austin Dillon is stepping out of a driving role. He will not be behind the wheel of the three-car next season. Austin Hill will move from the eight into to the three car and then that brings in the two additional cars of course Alex Bowman being behind the wheel of one of them and then Jesse Love who will be moving up from the Xfinity series and he is well he's been stolen from the Joe Gibbs racing and, and Toyota uh, program going into next season but uh, very curious to see what RCR is going to be able to do I think it's still going to take them a season or two to kind of get where they want to be under this new uh, leadership and ownership role a little bit in the mid-season area we saw Hendrick Motorsports caught cheating uh, due to, well, a brake manipulation system, basically what they were doing, and we saw it really in the five car of Kyle Larson in Road America. We saw it kind of go into Pocono as well. Uh, we saw a little bit out of the nine of Chase Elliott. Well, the whole team got caught with it. They were uh, financially penalized quite heavily, uh, and they were also points penalized, but just like a few years ago, IRL, Hendrick managed to work their magic in the appeal process and get all the points penalties taken away, erased, and and instead just got a higher financial penalty. So there was a lot of drama uh, around that, uh, but of course it got sorted out. Hendrick fell off a little bit there for a good four or five, six races, and now they've gotten back to where they need to be in the last few uh, races. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how that's going to go into the playoffs this season. And of course, we look in more recent news as well. Uh, in the 47 JTG team situation, sounds like they might be off the roster next season, but we know they're losing their main Kroger sponsor. Sounds like they might actually be coming over to the Joe Gibbs side of things, but we'll have to wait and see what happens there as there's still a lot of work to be done to get that uh, sponsor and, and whatnot brought over uh, to Joe Gibbs Racing and see if that actually happens or not. Uh, and as well, uh, looking at driver roster changes that we know have been confirmed most recently, Denny Hamlin's replacement was announced. It was speculated early in the season it was going to be John Hunter Nemechek. Well, that was completely proven false and instead Joe Gibbs went and stole Chandler Smith from Colleague Racing, who's been having a very solid season uh, as his first season in the Cup Series with that team in the number 13 car. As well, looking forward going towards the end of the season, Corey LaJoy basically guaranteed to be losing his ride in the 48, a very subpar season behind the wheel. Hendrick took a risk on him. It did not work out. Uh, and then Alex Bowman got fired from Hendrick and, and went to Colleague and, and won a race. So, uh, at uh, Kentucky, if I remember correctly now as well. Uh, teams looking to potentially expand as well. RFK has been in the market for maybe another charter, uh, 2311 as well, uh, and as well maybe don't even rule out maybe a front row motorsports, but there are certainly some teams uh, in the rumors right now that are all looking for potential buying of charters that are on the market going into uh, the fourth season of this career mode, but that's kind of been the catch up here now as well. We did have the new team come in this season of Meyer Shank Racing and Daniel Suarez leaving Trackhouse going uh, behind the wheel of that 06 car. They've run about what we expected, pretty subpar now. They were just kind of one of those small teams that have come in and just trying to do what they can. But that really brings you up to pace of the big things that have happened this season uh, through the first 26 races of this regular season, leading us into this 10 race playoff. And that we will now end this video on the format changes that are being considered uh, by the sport of NASCAR going into season four of this 
this career mode and NASCAR is considering heavily eliminating the round by round playoff format and returning to the 10 race chase format that if you've watched NASCAR from uh, the early ish 2000s to about 2013 you would know how that works it's just a 1 to 10 race chase and whoever has the most points at the end of the 10 races wins the championship now so if you maybe have one bad race instead of getting eliminated in the in the playoffs you still have a chance to win a championship now that is going to be decided by the council and the council is going to be, well, you guys watching this video and about midway through the playoffs, a vote is going to come out and the council uh, will determine if we keep the elimination style format with the playoffs or if we go over uh, to the 10 race chase format uh, and it'll be interesting to see what you guys are going to go with. I'm actually really curious to see. But that brings everybody up to speed, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of where we're at, and now that leads us into the playoffs, which will be starting uh, very soon here now as we try to take the 19 team to victory lane as many times as we can and seek of our first championship now as we enter at the top seed of the playoffs after winning the regular season championship. Three stage wins, three race wins. Let's see what we can do in the playoffs. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have yourselves a great day.